Hi, Grandma. Hi, Joe. So, what's what's your name? My name is Grandma Laney. <laughs> what's your legal name? My legal name now is Elaine Kern Brooks. What was your legal name? Before? I was born Karen Elaine Chafee. And my mom ditched the Karen when she enrolled me in kindergarten. Enrolled me as Elaine. And then the kids called me Elaney. So now my name is Grandma Laney. Oh, I'm um, Welch, Scotch, English, French, and German. And my nationality is American. Would you consider yourself white? Yes, except that white people aren't really white. The family that I was raised with, all my grandparents, all four grandparents lived in Compton. I was raised with all my grandparents, all my aunts and uncles, and all my cousins. I have a Native American adopted cousin, lots of Hispanic relatives. My original child was blonde hair, blue eyed, and... Um, when she was one and a half, I got pregnant and had a miscarriage at four months. So then um, I, rather than to have a, try to have another baby that might be a miscarriage, and there was a lot of adoption already in my family, I already had four adopted first cousins. And um, so, and John was okay with it, uh, adopting, and so we applied to adopt to adopt as soon as we got back to Madison. When I applied to adopt, the application asked me to rank 11 races in order of preference. And I circled the 11 and said that I wouldn't, I said it doesn't matter is what I said. And then Danny is sort of medium brown with black eyes, curly hair. Very cute. His, his two kids live near us, and they're African-American. <laughs> you mean my whole government, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a secret McCurman. What's your ethnicity? I'm black. What do you <laughs> I'm black. What do you consider yourself? Um, you know, it's so funny. I... I mean, I consider myself black because the world considers me black. My sister is light-skinned, and it plays out weird because people don't believe that we're related because I'm so much darker than her. She's so much lighter than me. And then there's some people that believe that we are because they say we look alike. Um, there was that racism, just people thinking that you're not related because you're different complexions. When people just don't when people just assume that you're not together it creates awkwardness but when people get hostile about it it just it gets even more awkward especially when you're a child like people would think that when if me and Jeff say we were with grandma um you know how if you're in groups people would just come and stand in between they would just cut us off from grandma and we're like hey like we're with with our grandma right now like why would you just come and stand in between us like that and it's just like those are awkward moments. Um, sometimes people get like offended when you you know try to tell them I'm with I'm with her, and they're like they they call you a liar, like like they think you're trying to like get over them, like try to sneak into a movie or something. Like I'm with her, she has my ticket, she paid for me. And they're like, no, where are your tickets? I'm like, I just told you they're with my grandma. And they're like, nothing's connecting because they see a white lady. <laughs> I got to be around, you know, my white grandma and her white friends. So I, I got to see a different, it, it, I, it's a different world to me. It really is. It's, it's two different worlds. I got to see what life is like from the side of being black and what life is like from the side of of being white. Not that I was necessarily white, just being around white people, the conversations, the just the energy, the vibes, it's 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 a completely different cultural experience than being around black people. And the only thing that really could 
I can attribute that would make me scary is hair and my skin tone. It's not. I don't go around mugging people. I don't. I don't carry guns and weapons around. <laughs> why would Why would I be scary? <laughs> So, I, there's just an enormous amount of tension, and I think that's because of fear being converted into blame, hostility, plus which I didn't know anybody who had a gun when I was a child. Even 10 years ago, this country had 300 million guns. Now we have more than 600 million guns. For 330 million people, we have over 6 million guns. I'm... I'm really afraid of this uh, I wouldn't move from California to a state that has open carry <laughs> anything like that I'm perceived as the bad guy a lot of the times and like um, I, had a, I had a track coach after three months of knowing me he told me you know what you're a pretty good guy and I was like what does that mean he said, "Well, you're not a thug. You're not a criminal. I thought you were. I thought you were a thug when you got here." And I was just like baffled. Like, why? Why do people think I'm a thug? Like, it is. It's the hair and the dark skin. Nothing. I don't. Nothing about me says thug. Like, if you know like a real person, a real someone who really traps the way they talk, the way they move, the mannerisms. I don't have none of that. I'm just a normal person. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if people could just be less hostile about that, like just understand that. I mean, I guess the world has shifted like that though. It seems to be more acceptance and openness to biracial families. Um, but there was nothing horrible about it. Like I said, it's it's an advantage. Like I got to see two sides, two two different cultures. Thank mm-hmm. you.